Hello, my name is Brooke Ward. I'm the President and CEO of the Washington Health System. It's my honor to be back with you as part of our ongoing Friday video series where we give you updates about what's going on in the world around us. And of course, just like we have for almost the last year and a half, we're going to do updates starting with COVID-19. And I want to talk first about the changes in the CDC and the Pennsylvania Department of Health mitigation guidelines for protecting us against COVID. Now, by this point, you might have heard the state of Pennsylvania is going to be lifting their masking mandates by June 28th or when 70% of all eligible individuals within the Commonwealth are fully vaccinated, whichever comes first. Between now and then, though, individuals who are fully vaccinated in public can go without a mask in certain situations. And non-healthcare organizations and agencies, they can still choose individually that business organization to require employees and customers to wear a mask. And so if you go to a business and they have a mask mandate up, even though the state has said you don't need to wear a mask, in that setting, you'd be obligated to wear a mask. And of course, the CDC and the Pennsylvania changes do not apply to healthcare organizations. We are still bound by all the masking and mitigation efforts that have been put in place for many months. So if you go to a healthcare organization, including all of the Washington Health System sites, you're gonna see our employees, patients and visitors are all required to still wear a mask because we're meeting and following the obligations of the Pennsylvania Department of Health and the CDC's guidelines for healthcare organizations, and we'll continue to do that. In addition, our visitation policy is gonna remain restricted for the foreseeable future until those mitigation efforts get lifted for healthcare organizations. I know that's been confusing. We've had patients and visitors come to our organization, you know, confused about why they have to wear a mask. Just as a reminder, again, the changes in masking do not apply to healthcare organizations at this point. Now, locally here in Washington County, only 41% of all eligible individuals have been fully vaccinated. So we have a ways to go to get to that 70%. If you're 12 years of old or older and haven't been vaccinated, I'd highly encourage you to do that. At this point, the vaccines are readily available and they're here to protect you and your loved ones. And if we're honest about it, there is no excuse at this point why you shouldn't get vaccinated. We have plenty of doses to give. And after giving millions and millions of doses, not only across the US, but across the world, the vaccine is proven time and time again to not only be safe, but effective. And you have a greater risk of getting COVID and having something bad happen to you than you do by far by getting the vaccine. So please strongly consider getting it if you haven't already. Now, if you'd like to get the vaccine from us, you can still do that at three sites. We have the Peters Township Rec Center, down in Waynesburg, we're at the Washington Health System Green at our hospital there. And here in Washington City, we've moved the vaccination clinic earlier this week from the Crown Center Mall back to the hospital in our Stout Conference Center, which is on the second level, the main lobby of the hospital. Parking is free if you come in for under 70, 70 minutes or less, and there's no reason why we shouldn't be able to get you in to get your vaccine and get out so you don't have to pay to park. And so that shouldn't be an issue. Happy to take care of you, happy to get you in and happy to get you vaccinated as quickly as possible. Now recall all of our clinics at this point are walk-in. You don't need to schedule an appointment. You can just show up at one of our clinics. You need to bring a photo ID if you're over the age of 18. If you're under 18, we'd highly encourage you to have a photo ID, but it's not required. But for those individuals, you need to have a legal guardian or a parent with you at all times when you get vaccinated. If you got your first Pfizer dose somewhere else and you wanna to come to us for your second dose, we're happy to do that for you as well. What we need you to do is bring your photo ID, your vaccination card, and you should show up somewhere between 21 and 42 days after you received the first injection. Now we know a number of people still have concerns and questions about the vaccine, its safety and effectiveness. And so we've been doing a number of videos where we've been recording our trusted physicians and pharmacists where they're answering common questions you might have. We have two of those posted on our Facebook page now. We're gonna be releasing more of them here over the next couple weeks. We'll also be putting those on our website here in the near future as well. So you can be on the lookout for those. But one of the best sources you can talk to if you have questions is still is going to your primary care physician. If you don't have a primary care physician, you can call our physician referral line. That number is 724-250. 4310 and we'll do our best effort to match you up with a physician who suits your needs and you can have a conversation with that physician about the vaccine and any other health related issue you have. And of course, if you're looking for answers online, please be very careful. Remember, just because something's posted online does not mean it's true. Matter of fact, it, it probably isn't true, particularly if you're looking at social media. The best 
true source of information is going to be the CDC website and the Pennsylvania Department of Health. Those are your best sources for truth around the vaccine, and you can check them out there. And again, like I said earlier, you can look at the videos we're posted from our trusted physicians and pharmacists on these issues coming up as well. Now, moving off COVID and onto a couple other things. One, I wanted to acknowledge the memorial holiday we all celebrated last weekend. I wanted to thank and share my appreciation for all active duty military and veterans across the U.S. and across the world. But most importantly, to those individuals who lost their life in the performance of their military duties. That's what this holiday was set up for decades ago. That's what we're celebrating. And I wanted to acknowledge those individuals here today. Now, we also have right around the corner the 4th of July holiday coming up. And I wanna make sure I recognize that holiday as well because our next video will be after that. We're working and hoping to be at the Greater Canisburg 4th of July Parade. It's actually gonna be on July 3rd this year, which is a Saturday. I say hope because in the COVID world, you never know if an event's gonna get canceled or not. We know the Canisburg Parade Committee is working hard to pull this event off. We hope that the event will happen. We hope we have great weather. And if all that's true, we'll see you there. We hope to see you out in public celebrating the 4th of July. If you can't make it to that event, I know there are lots of great celebrations on other communities around our counties and in our individual homes. I hope you have a great and safe 4th of July holiday coming up. Those are my updates for this uh, month. I hope you found it useful. Thank you for spending a little time with us. Our next video is gonna be a little over a month from now on July 9th. Until then, stay safe.